Hi, I'm Tom, coming to you from Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you for selecting my video. In today's video, we will be doing a continuation of a number of experiments that I did in a prior video called Underproofed or Overproofed, A Tale of Four Lobes. For those of you who are familiar with that video, I created four different loaves of bread and varied the bulk fermentation and final proofing time and we evaluated the impact on overproofing or underproofing those lobes. In that experiment, for the final proofing, we did all the final proofing using a three, four, or five hour countertop proof at room temperature. And following the success of that video, many people asked me to do a similar video, but doing variations on the overnight cold proof or cold retard in the refrigerator rather than the countertop room temperature proof. So that's what we'll be doing today. We will basically be making six loaves using the exact same process through bulk fermentation, shaping the loaves, and then we will do six evaluations or experiments of longer and longer final proofing time in the refrigerator. So I call this video, The Long Cold Proof. In this video, we'll be making six loaves and evaluating changes in the loaf as we extend the final proofing time. So the six loaves will go like this. The first one, we will do a 24 hour cold proof. Uh, and the reason I'm not doing something less than 24 hours is because I've done that in many of my other videos. So I'll insert an example of a 12 or 14 hour overnight cold retard that I normally do. But for this, these new loaves, we'll start with the first one, which is one day or 24 hours in the refrigerator. Then we'll do 36 hours in the refrigerator. This is a common time that, that a lot of people will do as a long, longer cold retard or final proof in the refrigerator. The third loaf will be two days or 48 hours in the refrigerator. The fourth loaf will be three days or 72 hours in the refrigerator. The fifth loaf will be four days long and 96 hours in the refrigerator. And the sixth loaf will be five days in the refrigerator, 120 hour cold proof or cold retard. So what do we expect to happen? I'm not really sure because the longest I've done is about a 24 hour cold retard or cold proof in the refrigerator. Theoretically, what will happen is that as we extend the cold proofing time, the reason most people do that is because it will improve the flavor of the, the bread, particularly if you're looking for that sour flavor, because what happens with a long cold proof is that the yeast activity will basically go into hibernation, but the lactic acid bacteria will continue working and the lactic acid bacteria at the low temperatures will create mostly acetic acid, which is essentially a type of vinegar that's being created. And that's what gives you the sour flavor. So in terms of flavor development, the long cold proofs generally will give you a more sour loaf, but what's also happening at the same time is as the microbes are working at low temperature, they're giving off different byproducts that essentially start to deteriorate the gluten in the dough and essentially will start to break down the dough so that by day five, you might have your gluten structure completely flattened out and the loaf might be unusable. We don't know. So the purpose of this experiment is to see what's that sweet spot between one day and five days where you've maximized that real pungent sour flavor that some people go for, but you haven't taken it too far to the point where it's either doesn't taste very good uh, or more typically where the gluten structure starts to break down and the loaf just, you won't get any oven spring and you won't get the shape of a loaf. You'll get a flat ball of starter basically. So that's the purpose of this experiment. We'll see how it goes. So before we get into the experiments, I just want to recap the recipe that I use because the recipe you're using will also influence the outcome. You, you can't just apply these results to any other recipe because all these sourdough recipes, you know, the steps in the process are inextricably linked with the ingredients and the prior steps in the process. So let me catch you up with where we are right now. 
So I basically follow the tartine bread basic country loaf recipe. This is a very popular recipe that a lot of people are familiar with. What this recipe involves is basically 90% bread flour, 10% whole wheat flour. So that's a relatively low percentage of whole wheat in this mix. It uses a 20% starter in the recipe. That's pretty standard uh, starter quantity. And as you know, if you increase your starter percentage, that will accelerate your fermentation process. If you decrease your starter percentage, that will generally, el generally elongate your fermentation processes. 20% is about the standard. And this is also a 78% hydration recipe, uh, which is a little bit on the high side from a hydration perspective. So just so you know the variables that we're working with, 90% bread flour, 10% whole wheat, 20% starter, 78% hydration. Those are the variables. I mixed everything up this morning. This, this recipe uses a ferment lease instead of an auto lease where I added the starter in right from the start, let that sit for about 35 minutes. Then I add the salt in, uh, mix the dough together, and then immediately start the stretch and fold process, which is the official beginning of bulk fermentation according to this recipe, even though we had a little bit of pre-fermentation going on in the ferment lease process. Bulk fermentation is exactly four hours, starting with the first stretch and fold. I did four stretch and folds to build the gluten. Those are with uh, 30 minute breaks in between each one. Then I let the dough rest and the dough rose approximately 30% in this vessel, which is exactly what the recipe calls for is a 30% rise over a three to four hour period. I let this go four hours and my bulk fermentation temperature was around 80 degrees Fahrenheit during that four hours. This dough looks exactly like my dough when I make this recipe. So if you look at any of my prior videos, this is exactly the same looking process right up to this point. So if you're interested in what I did prior to this, all my other videos go through in great detail to get to this point where we're ready to shape the loaves. So what I will be doing now is I'm gonna take this um, bulk fermented dough and I'm going to shape up six loaves. The size of these loaves, I'm basically doing a little bit smaller than half size loaves. So typically the tartine recipe uh, uses a thousand grams of flour to create two large boules, 500 grams of flour weight each. What I typically do is I do half sized loaves. So I do 250 gram loaves and that's what you'll see in my underproofed or overproofed example. Uh, just to cut down a little bit on, on the amount of dough that I'm working with here and the amount of bread that I have to eat in the next five days, I'm gonna do six 200 gram flour weight loaves. So I added 1200 grams of flour to this instead of the standard 1000 grams. And I'll be dividing this up into six, what I'd call half sized loaves or slightly smaller than half sized. So let me get these divided up and then we'll check back in before we put these into the refrigerator. That dough looks really good. I'm just lightly tapping this so you can get a sense of the aeration of the dough. So if you're trying to replicate this procedure, you'll get a sense of what my dough looked like before we started. This is coming out of a four hour bulk fermentation at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a really nice looking dough, standing up really proudly. Now I'll divide this into six loaves. <laughs> 
shaped up the six lobes. This is just a rough uh, pre-shaping. I'm going to let these sit for 30 minutes. So these have been bench resting for 30 minutes. I'm going to do final shaping now. A couple of these came out smaller than the others. So I'm going to make those the first lobes that we bake up, which we'll be baking more for flavor difference than structure. And then I'll keep the slightly larger loaves for the latter ones, the four and five day uh, proofing, because that's where we'll really want to see if the structure holds up in those loaves. So let me get these uh, final shaped. Okay, I have six loaves ready to go. I did the two smallest ones as boules, the next four as batards, just because I don't have uh, six um, of the same size pans. I'm not using banatons for these. I'm just using these mini loaf pans. Um, so these may spread out a little bit more than if they were in proper banatons, but because I'm doing these, these half-sized minus loaves, uh, this is the best I have. So. I'm going to mark these. So what we have here, loaf number one, we're going to bake this one up in 24 hours. Loaf number two, 36 hours. Loaf number three, 48 hours. Loaf number four, 72 hours. Loaf number five, 96 hours. Loaf number six, 120 hours. So five days, four days, three days, two days, one and a half days, one day. So let me get these in the refrigerator and I'll see you back here in 24 hours when we bake up loaf number one. So it's been about 23 hours since we put the six loaves into the refrigerator. I'm getting ready to bake the first one when we hit the 24 hour mark. I'm just preheating the oven now. As we wait for the oven to heat up, I just want to talk about what we'll be comparing these loaves to. And that's what I would call my baseline or benchmark loaf. So typically when I do the tartine bread recipe, I, I bake bread at least once a week. The process that I follow is exactly the same process that we've seen in this video so far with the mixing of the dough, the four hours of bulk fermentation. And then I typically do an eight to 12 hour overnight cold proof in the refrigerator. That's what's recommended in the recipe. That's the standard loaf that I make. So I wanted to show some video from a prior video uh, project that I did of what those loaves look like. And here's an example from a few weeks ago where I baked four half-size loaves, two batards and two boules, very similar to what we're doing here. So the first thing I would note is just the color of the loaves, the oven spring. Uh, you can see that I got you know tremendous oven spring and a nice ear on the batards. Uh, and then looking at the crumb, you can see the very even distribution of small, medium, and large size holes. This is kind of the classic basic loaf uh, that I'll be comparing these to, just so you have an idea of what that looks like, because that's what I'm using as a benchmark. In terms of the flavor of these loaves, if you're not familiar with the tartine bread recipe, it's a fairly mild flavor loaf that Chad Robertson, the author, goes for. I would I describe it as much more of a light country loaf than a classic San Francisco tangy sourdough flavor. It's, it's very much of a lighter flavor. So even with the eight to 12 hour cold proof in the refrigerator, the tartine loaf, I mean, you can tell that you're eating sourdough, but it does not really like knock you back with the tanginess of flavor. So as we start to move through 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, etc., cetera, 
what I'll be looking for is really that that note of you know how much more sour does the loaf get as we add you know more and more time to the cold retard. And then in addition to that, we'll obviously be looking at what's the impact on the structure and at what point does the gluten start to break down and you really lose the integrity of the loaf. Okay, my oven is preheated. We are about ready to score and bake loaf number one. Let me get that out of the refrigerator. Okay, loaf number one, this is a small boule. This has been in the refrigerator for 24 hours. The temperature uh, on this loaf, I had a thermometer right on top of it, was about 38 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 3.5 degrees Celsius. So let's see how this one looks. The first thing I'm gonna do is smell this. No really noticeable smell any different than normal. I'm gonna dust this with a little rice flour to keep the bottom from sticking. Now this is a pretty small boule. Uh, when I divided the, the dough into six parts, this was the smallest part. So I'm really looking more for flavor than structure on this one because we're just 24 hours into the experiment. So we flip this out onto parchment paper carefully. Yeah, this is a very small loaf. Carefully remove. And then I like to scrape off some of the big mountains of rice flour here. There's really no need for that to go into the oven. And then with the boules, I usually try to do a little pinwheel scoring. I'm just gonna do a real simplified version of that. Basically two little intersecting S curves this loaf is losing its shape a little bit. I noticed as soon as I cut into that, that's a little less firm than some of my other loaves coming out of the refrigerator. So even at 24 hours, we're seeing a little bit of structure um, loss, but it, it did not open up and fall apart the way that some real overproofed loaves look. It just seems a little softer, a little looser than uh, prior loaves that I've, uh, that I've baked. So let me get this into the oven. We're gonna bake this 20 minutes with the lid on at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I take the lid off for 20 more minutes. I start checking it about 15 minutes of the way through. Uh, because this is such a small loaf, this isn't gonna go the full 20 minutes with the lid off. I just kind of eyeball it through the window and, and see when it's done. And then I'll definitely take a temperature reading on this to make sure that we're above 210 or so degrees Fahrenheit when it's done. So let me get this in the oven. Okay, loaf number one was in the refrigerator for 24 hours. It just came out of the oven. Uh, so let's take a look at it. So this is a real mini boule, smaller than I usually make. This is probably 150 gram flour weight. I was shooting for 200, but this one got uh, the short end of the stick. This boule looks amazing uh, for, for a couple reasons. One, the oven spring is tremendous. I mean, this was a flat um, loaf coming out of the refrigerator, it's at least tripled in size, maybe even four times in height. It opened up beautifully on that little um, pinwheel scoring that I did. Uh, that pinwheel really allows this bowl to kind of turn as it opens. It almost opens like a flower. Um, so this is one of the better looking oven springs I've gotten on this type of loaf. The boules always bake up a little more blonde uh, because I bake them in a smaller Dutch oven. This Dutch oven is kind of a, I almost touched that. That Dutch oven is a little thinner walled Dutch oven, just doesn't get the radiant heat on the loaf the way my big Dutch oven does. But this looks very similar to my other boules. It actually looks a little darker on the top part here, maybe slightly more caramelization. But the one biggest difference I noticed even starting probably 15 minutes ago when I took the lid off, is the smell. This loaf smells more sour, absolutely, than my prior loaves. I mean, I know what my loaves smell like. This one definitely has a more, definitely has a more sour smell to it, absolutely, unmistakable. Um, so we're gonna let this cool for about 90 minutes and then we will cut it open, look at the crumb, and do a taste test.
Okay, loaf number one, this is our 24 hour loaf. This is fully cooled. I'm going to cut into this and see how it looks inside. Nice crispy crust, really soft crumb that I can feel with the knife. That's a really nice loaf. It's tough to get a perfect crumb with this small of a boule, but you can see this looks very similar. Looks very similar to my other loaves um, that I've done. This is probably the smallest one I've done, and that's still a pretty decent open crumb. So the crust looks the same as my baseline loaf. The crumb looks the same. There's no deterioration of gluten structure evident, and the smell is is a little more sour, not quite as much as I noticed when it was baking. So we're gonna do a taste test. Okay, I've done the taste test on this loaf and I have also enlisted another tasting judge. My wife has agreed to taste these six loaves as well. She is in a hermetically sealed separate room with a slice of bread and we are both tasting this independently. I'm going to uh, go and get her test results. So we both uh, had pretty much the same um, reaction to this loaf. And it's a little bit more about texture than taste, interestingly. So this is a 24 hour uh, cold retard overnight proof. And both of us agreed that this is a softer crust and just a softer texture to the loaf than we've typically had before. I baked this exactly the same way that I've baked prior loaves in the past. And this definitely had a different mouthfeel, both in the crumb and the crust was just a little more tender. Uh, it did not have any kind of big bang sour flavor, but there, I would say there was a little bit of a tangy after taste or an after note at the very end that was a little bit different than our prior loaves. Um, and overall, everything else is very similar to our other loaves. So 24 hours, not very much different than the 12 hour uh, cold retard that we typically do. It's the morning of day two, and I just made some toast with the 24-hour loaf, loaf number one. I have sourdough toast pretty much 365 days a year. Um, so I toasted up some of that first loaf, the 24-hour loaf. It definitely tastes different. Um, it's, I would describe it as a more complex flavor, not still not really a biting sour flavor, but as I bit into the toast, the texture was, again, really light and airy more so than usual. And the flavor just had a little bit more depth of flavor. I know I can't put a specific description on that yet, uh, but just a little bit more complexity to the flavor. And as I was toasting that bread, the same thing I noticed yesterday when I was baking was the fragrance is clearly different. You, it, it smells like an old time bakery. I don't know a better way to describe it, but they say that your sense of smell is most associated with your memories. And when I smelled that, bread baking yesterday and the toast today, it reminds me of something from my childhood. Um, so we're getting there. Um, we didn't see that much change in loaf number one, but definitely we're moving in the right direction. Okay, it's day two. We are on loaf number two. This one has been in the refrigerator for 36 hours. Let me grab that loaf. Okay, let's take a look. I had to get up early to do this one. Okay, I don't notice anything different about the smell coming out of the refrigerator. This one was at 37 degrees, so overnight without opening the door at all. Uh, it's slightly cooler than uh, the first loaf. So we're sitting at 37. These are on the bottom shelf of my refrigerator, just above my crisping drawer. It's pretty cool down there. I think the top shelf might be closer to 40 degrees. These are sitting at between 37 to 38 degrees. So, okay that's a good looking loaf coming out of the refrigerator um it didn't flatten out too much kept its shape okay in that bowl. That bowl has a pretty flat bottom, so this isn't the perfect shaping bowl for a boule 
of this size, but it's not bad. So I'm going to do the same cut on this one, that um, pinwheel cut with four spokes, which I like to do for my small round loaves. That's a good cut. Then I like to look at the loaf, see how it opens up right after I score it. This one isn't moving very much. That's a good sign, but again, it's pretty cold at 37 degrees. It's not gonna go anywhere. If I let this sit here for a while, it would open up. And then I look down inside the loaf to see, can I see any gluten strands emerging, the signs of overproofing? I don't see anything like that. So this looks pretty good, 36 hours. This is also a real common cold proof time. I did a survey of other sourdough bakers on one of my uh, social media groups that I participate in. And I asked people what they usually did for their overnight cold proof. A lot of people do 36, maybe 48 hours on, on the long end. Then I asked people what was the longest possible that they did. The longest I've, I heard was, was five days. So that's why we're gonna do the five day loaf eventually. So 36 hours this is a pretty common time. For cold proof we'll see how this comes out i'm going to put this in the oven and bake it up okay we are looking at loaf number two our 36 hours in the refrigerator loaf this just came out of the oven this bakes at 450 degrees 20 minutes with the lid on 15 minutes with the lid off i just took the temperature and it's exactly 211 212 degrees fahrenheit which is the target these bulls cook up a little bit more blonde in color this is um, partially because of that thin-walled Dutch oven. This is very typical uh, of what this bowl would look like when I normally bake it. I don't see any difference here at all in terms of what I'm seeing on the outside of the loaf. Baked up beautifully, really nice oven spring. Uh, it opened up, you know, as usual. The crust looks very similar to how it typically looks. So if I hadn't known that this had been in the refrigerator for 36 hours, I would have thought that this was my eight to 12 hour loaf. So let's uh, let this cool and then we'll do the taste test. Okay, our 36 hour loaf has cooled for 90 minutes. So let's cut this open and see what it looks like on the inside. As I did step away from this and look at it, even though I got really good oven spring, this, this looks a little flatter than my normal loaves. Normally I'd have more of a kind of pyramidal shape and this one does have a little bit of an elbow to it and looks a little bit flatter. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Really nice crust, soft crumb as I'm cutting. That's a nice looking loaf. So now this one I'm seeing a little bit more dense crumb on the bottom and then that kind of large irregular hole on the top, but this does not look significantly different from my other lobes, but you can also see what I was talking about where the shape is a little more triangular than, than really domed. Um, so this loaf might be losing a little bit of its internal structure based on the 36 hours, but not really evident. Um, much more than that slight change in the shape from what I normally would see. So let's give this a taste test and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so we did the taste test. I have my results. Let me get the results from the other taste testing judge. So we both think this is very similar to yesterday, loaf number one, very soft crumb, uh, for sure, noticeably soft crumb, very soft texture throughout. I thought the crust was a little crunchier and crispier on this one. The other judge felt that the crust was about the same. And then with respect to the flavor, we both felt the same thing, slightly more sour than yesterday, but again, not a significant difference. So we're moving up kind of very slowly on the sourness scale from our standard loaf through loaf number one and then loaf number two. The 36 hour loaf uh, toast test, uh, very soft crumb, a little bit sour, not significantly different. So we'll bake up loaf number three and see how that comes out in about 12 hours.
So before we start loaf three, let's pause and recap where we are. <clears throat> so we've done two loaves so far, the 24 hour loaf and the 36 hour loaf. And when I assess what's happening with those two loaves, they're not really developing that much of a sour flavor, not as much as I would have expected. So I just wanna pause and think about why could that be happening or how could that be happening? So let's talk about what's happening in the refrigerator while these loaves are in there. <clears throat> the two microbes in, in the loaf, the yeast and lactic acid bacteria, both behave differently at low temperature. The yeast at the low temperature in the refrigerator below 40 degrees Fahrenheit is completely asleep. The yeast is dreaming of asexual reproduction in a deep slumber. It's not doing anything. The lactic acid bacteria will continue working and it'll continue eating starches and sugars and generating manufacturing acetic acid, which creates the sour flavor, but it will only do that down to about 35 degrees Fahrenheit or two degrees Celsius. We are just above that temperature in my refrigerator, or at least we were this morning, you know, when it was uh, with the door closed all night, 37, 38 degrees is the temperature uh, as I'm taking these loaves out. And I actually have a thermometer on top of each loaf. So I know exactly what the temperature is, because if you, if you're not aware, the temperature in your refrigerator can vary quite a bit. The bottom shelf is typically cooler than the top shelf. The back of the refrigerator is typically cooler than the front of the refrigerator. So I have these loaves about three quarters of the way down on a bottom ish shelf. And it's, you know, say 37, 38 degrees in there. The safe food temperature for the overall refrigerator is usually 40 degrees. So you don't want to, you know, go up above 40, but I'm going to try to move the lobes up to the middle or top shelf to try to get the temperature up closer to something like 40 degrees. Now, what I've done today is the third loaf that we'll be preparing here shortly. I did move that up onto the top shelf about eight hours ago. And when I opened the refrigerator door, we've been opening and closing it all day. The temperature up there is showing 43 to 44 degrees Fahrenheit. So that one, the temperature has been up for about eight hours. When we shut everything down at night, you know, the, the temperature in the entire refrigerator will probably get down below 40 again. I'm, in fact, I'm sure it will. Um, but I'm going to play with the temperature a little bit because with sourdough baking, anytime you're, you're trying to do fermentation based on time, it's always temperature dependent. You, you can't separate time and temperature. I was hoping we could just throw everything in the fridge and just look at time as the variable, but I feel like we have to mess with the temperature a little bit to try to get a little more activity out of the lactic acid bacteria. So I'll be reading out the temperatures as I take each loaf out of the refrigerator, but I'm gonna to try to get them up closer to 40 and a little bit further away from, you know, 35 where they would completely shut down. Okay, we are ready for loaf three. This is our 48 hour loaf. Let me grab it out of the refrigerator. As I mentioned, I moved this up to the top shelf about eight hours ago. This thermometer is showing 46 degrees Fahrenheit which is a little high for refrigerator, but we've been in and out of the refrigerator preparing dinner. I'm guessing that it averages about 40, maybe 41 degrees up on the top. So this was on the bottom shelf for about 40 hours on the top shelf for eight hours. Based on the two temperatures that it was at, I'm gonna call this about 39 degree average temperature over the last 48 hours. I'm gonna to try to get the other lobes to be about 40 degrees average temperature for the duration of the experiment, we'll see what happens and if I can do that. So how does this one look? This, this is a small batard. Uh, so I shaped this in a different size pan. So the first thing I do is smell it. It smells just like the other ones. It flattened out a little bit in this pan because this pan is a little large for this, these mini loaves that I made. So I'm just gonna dust up the bottom of this with some rice flour. Flip this onto my parchment. One other thing you can notice here with, I noticed this with the, with the loaf this morning and this one, is you're seeing more of that moisture come out of these loaves onto my towel. That did not happen on loaf number one, where you're getting some moisture wicking. 
Then I just scrape off the clumps of rice flour. Now this loaf is definitely relaxing as soon as I take it out of that pan. This is flattening out a little bit more quickly than the other two that we did earlier. So we could be losing a little bit of structure. But as I said, that pan was not ideal for these mini loaves. Okay, so we're gonna score this. I just do one cut down through these batards, nothing fancy. There it is. And then I watch it for a minute just to see how that opens up. Yeah, it's opening up slightly more than the others. It's a little flatter than the other lobes, but nothing serious. I wouldn't say, oh my gosh, I've overproofed this, um, but it's relaxing a little bit more. That corner is a little dented. So let's get this in the oven and see how it bakes up. Okay, loaf number three is done. Let's. Uh, take a look at our 48 hour loaf. So this loaf was in the refrigerator for 48 hours. Uh, this is a really nice looking loaf. I mean, beautiful oven spring. You can see how the scoring opened up. We even got a small ear on the small loaf. Um, it flattened out a little bit. I usually look at the corners and you can see how the corners of the loaf uh, on the batards kind of spread out. That's somewhat of a sign of overproofing or relaxing of the gluten structure, but this does not look bad at all. This has that more sour smell that I've been smelling on all three of the loaves when they come out of the oven. And this one baked up a little bit darker than the boules. I do bake the batards in my larger thick walled Dutch oven and it tends to just give it a little browner bake. So I attribute some of this to uh, baking it in a different vessel and some of it also to uh, more caramelization coming out of the, to the crust with the longer fermentation in the refrigerator. So we'll let this cool for 90 minutes and then we will cut it open, take a look at the crumb and do a taste test. Okay, the loaf has cooled for 90 minutes, so we're ready to cut this open, and then we will do a taste test. So this, as I mentioned, this loaf baked up a little browner than the others. Let's see what it looks like. Same feel as the others, crunchy crusts, light crumb. That's a really nice loaf. Very nice distribution of holes in the crumb. So I'm not seeing any evidence of overproofing um, in this dough. Maybe it flattened out a little bit compared to some prior loaves, but this still has good oven spring. Um, really nice texture. I don't have a lot to say about that. It's a good looking loaf. It smells good. Now I'll do a taste test. Okay, we completed the taste test. Let me get the results from the other tasting judge from her soundproof chamber. So loaf number three, the 48 hour loaf. Um, we both agree that this had a little bit harder crust. This one baked up a little harder on the top in particular, a little darker. Um, I baked it about the same time as the other loaf, same temperature. So there, there may be a little bit more caramelization coming to the, to the top of the crust on this one. It's definitely a darker color with more blistering than we saw on the boule and much less that blonde uh, color. The bottom is still very soft though. So this isn't uniformly kind of crustier, just on the top. Uh, the texture of the crumb, again, very light and soft, similar to the other ones. And in terms of the sour flavor, this one has had a little bit more immediately tangy taste right on the tip of the tongue. The prior two loaves had that tangy aftertaste, which this one also had, but I'd say this is the first one that really has more of a sour forward flavor right as you immediately taste it. So we're still moving along the sour spectrum, but again, this does not jump out as kind of 
knock you out sour flavor, but it's moving up the continuum with the 48 hour loaf. Okay, it's the next morning. I just did the toast taste test for the 48 hour loaf. And it's interesting to compare it to the 36 hour loaf. The 36 hour loaf with the toast had more of a sour aftertaste to it and a very soft, creamy tasting crumb. The 48 hour loaf, which I just tried, had a very, very much of the sour forward taste. Like the moment it touches your tongue, you can taste the sour uh, flavor and the crumb and crust were a little lighter and crispier and didn't quite have that soft, creamy texture of the 36 hour loaf. As I mentioned, I did move this up to a higher uh, shelf in the refrigerator for the last eight hours. So the average temperature over the 48 hours was about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. I think I found the sweet spot in the refrigerator now where the second shelf is about 40 degrees uh, pretty consistently. So I've moved the next three loaves up to that 40 degree shelf for the duration of the experiments. So we'll move on to loaf number four. Okay, we are on loaf number four. This is our 72 hour loaf that's been in the refrigerator for three days. Let me get it out of the refrigerator. So this loaf has been in the refrigerator for 72 hours. Let's take a look. Now this loaf was on my bottom shelf in the refrigerator for the first two days at about 38 degrees Fahrenheit. I thought that was a little low. So I moved it up to the top shelf yesterday, which was about 43 to 44 degrees for the last 24 hours. So this has had an average temperature, if you will, of 40 degrees Fahrenheit over three days, uh, which is right where we want to be. Um, so I'm looking at the loaf. This is actually standing up in the, in the shaping basket fairly well. I expected maybe it would have flattened out a little bit more, but it has not. So let's uh, get this out of the makeshift banneton. Uh, again, you can see how much liquid is coming out of these um, loaves now onto the towel. That's That one's really wet. So we're losing a little bit of liquid out of the loaves. The loaves are dehydrating a little bit in the refrigerator. That loaf looks really good. I mean, that's standing up nicely. I'm kind of surprised um, for being in there for three days. So just looking at it, it looks fine. I don't see any wrinkling on the um, crust or skin that would indicate that the loaf is collapsing and it looks fairly airy. So I'm optimistic about this loaf. I'm just gonna score this with one, one line down. Then, you know, you can feel the loaf a little bit as you're scoring it. And this is pushing back on me. It's still got a lot of aeration in it. it does not feel like a real slack loaf. Then I let it sit for a moment just to see if it's going to collapse and open up at all. The little indentation in the corner where I grabbed that to pull the lam through is actually coming back a little bit. I don't traditionally do the, the poke test as they call it coming out of the refrigerator because it's really not reliable. Uh, but I just kind of did one there and it's coming back a little bit. So this loaf looks pretty good. It did open up. You can see uh, where I slashed it with the lam. This one has opened up a little bit more than the others, which implies the loaf is a little bit more slack than some of the other loaves, but this one's ready to go into the oven. Okay, our fourth loaf, the 72 hour cold retard in the refrigerator just came out of the oven. This loaf looks amazing. Um, if I hadn't known that this had been in the refrigerator for three days, this looks like a perfectly normal loaf. We got tremendous oven spring on this loaf, a nice ear. Um, and then you can see it opened up on the scoring, beautiful gluten structure exposed, no evidence at all that there's been any degradation of the gluten or the structure of this loaf. This looks really fantastic. Um, the one interesting thing is this baked up very quickly. Normally these loaves would bake for about 35 minutes, 20 minutes with the lid on, 15 minutes with the lid off. Uh, 
This one I caught at 29 minutes and it was almost, you know, had gone too far. Got a little burning on the ear here. But um, I think what happens with these loaves is with the long retard, more of the sugars come to the surface and these loaves will bake up a little more quickly. I, I've seen this phenomenon when I've done the countertop proofing and extended that time to three, four, five hours. The, the longer they proof, the quicker they bake and the darker they get. So we might be seeing some of that here. But this loaf looks great. So we will let that cool for 90 minutes and then we'll come back and cut it open, check out the crumb and do a taste test. Okay, the 72 hour loaf, let's cut this open and see what it looks like on the inside. A little bit less crispy crust than we saw on the other two. The other three. Okay, now this crumb is interesting. Uh, it's not bad, but you can see that we've lost the big holes in the crumb. So this is now heading in the direction of overproofing. I can even tell when I squeeze the loaf, it's very kind of squishy. It doesn't have the firmness that it had before. That's, that's not a bad looking loaf at all, but just the texture of the crumb is moving on us in the direction of overproofing, but that's still a perfectly good loaf. Uh, very interesting. So now we will do a taste test of this loaf and see how it tastes. Okay, we've done the taste test for the 72 hour loaf. Let me get the feedback from the judge in the remote location. Okay, this is an interesting loaf. Um, both of us think this is the best tasting loaf yet of the four that we've baked. To me, this one had a little bit more of a wheat flavor right off the bat, which I haven't tasted very much in the other loaves. This had a softer texture definitely than the 48 hour loaf um, and a softer crust, which I noticed when I was cutting it. Th this loaf had a more interesting sour flavor to it. I would say it's still moving up the sour continuum, but it actually had a little bit less bite than the sourness of the the 48 hour loaf. This has a little more mellow sour flavor, in my opinion, um, and a little less bitterness to the sour flavor, if that makes sense. Also, the crust on this just looks different than the prior loaves. This has a real golden crust, so I don't know if different um, enzymes or something came out of the dough in this 72 hour uh, cold proofing but there's definitely something different about this loaf. Uh, the 72 hour loaf has some interesting complexities to the flavor. As I said, the crust, I was a little nervous because this crust is soft, um, but it tastes good. So that's our best tasting loaf yet. So I did a toast taste test of the last three loaves, the 72 hour loaf, the 48 hour loaf, and the 36 hour loaf. The 24 hour loaf is long gone, but just looking at the last three loaves, uh, similar to when I tasted them fresh, increasing levels of sourness. That 48 hour loaf had a little bitterness to it, but that was also the darker of the three loaves. So I'm not sure if that was the sourness or something to do with uh, how that one baked up a little bit darker. The pretty consistent results with what was expected. Okay, we are on to loaf number five. This is our 96 hour loaf. It's been in the refrigerator for four days. Let me get that out of the fridge. Okay, this has been in the refrigerator for four days. Let's take a look. This loaf looks pretty good. Uh, similar to the 72 hour loaf, this one actually has a little aeration. It's standing up in the pan. So even at 40 degrees, which is what this has been at now, uh, the yeast is still working a little bit here, or it's evident that, that there's some yeast activity in here because this is still getting some additional aeration in the dough. It's very minor when you consider it's been in here for four days, but it definitely, definitely has not flattened out and it does not look lifeless. 
So let's get this dusted up. Similar to the other loaves, more and more moisture coming out of each one of these the longer they're in the refrigerator. That loaf has definitely puffed up uh, more so than the prior one. So there's some air in there. That's a good sign. It's a good looking loaf. That one, the skin seems a little more slack. It was really pulling away as I scored that loaf. But as I see it opening up, it's relaxing a little bit more than the prior. That still looks okay inside. Sometimes when a loaf is really overproofed, you'll see the gluten strands inside the slash there. But this one doesn't look too bad. I think it's gonna bake up similar to the one we did yesterday. It's a little bit misshapen on this end. Um, but not a bad looking loaf. Let's get this in the oven. Okay, the 96 hour loaf is done baking. This one baked for 32 minutes, so it did not bake as quickly as the one yesterday, and it also didn't brown quite as dark as the 72 hour loaf. Not really sure why. Let's pull it out and take a look at it. Okay, that, that's really a beautiful loaf. Uh, again, four days in the refrigerator, tremendous oven spring, beautiful ear, nice shape. You know, if I walked in and saw this loaf sitting here, I would have no idea that this had been in the refrigerator for four days. There's nothing visible on the outside. The only thing I can say is the scoring did open up a little bit more than usual. So it's possible that we're losing a little bit of the structural integrity of the loaf just based on the size of that split. But usually I would look at that and say, that's a great looking loaf, but that's all I can say about it right now. We're gonna let that cool for 90 minutes and we will cut it open and do a taste test. Okay, this loaf spent four days in the refrigerator at roughly 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we're ready to cut into it. This loaf did open up quite a bit on top. It's not a bad thing. It's just a little different than the other loaves. Let's see what it looks like inside. That's a fantastic looking loaf. I mean, that looks like a loaf that I would have done same day proof, um, 12 hour cold retard. I mean, there's no evidence looking inside the loaf. There's no evidence that this is start even starting to overproof. It's quite surprising. So four days in the refrigerator, that loaf looks amazing. Okay, we have completed the taste test for the 96 hour loaf. Let me get the testing results from the other judge whose identity will not be disclosed. Okay, very similar uh, feedback. This is a fabulous loaf of bread, 96 hours in the refrigerator. The sourness is very similar to the 72 hour loaf. It is not significantly more sour, and we both agree that that 48-hour loaf it was still tasted the most sour. So it seems like we've kind of plateaued here, maybe slightly more sour than the 72-hour loaf, but very, very close. This also just has an amazingly soft texture to it. Both the crust, even though the crust is kind of thin by sourdough standards, it's just a really nice tender crust and soft crumb. This is a fabulous loaf of bread at four days in the refrigerator. Uh, this also baked up with that same color, a little bit more of this golden color that we saw in the prior loaf. So this one is similar to the 72 hour, but we like this one a little bit better. And there's no sign at all of any degradation 
in the dough structure, the gluten structure. It's really quite amazing. So I did the toast taste test on the last three loaves, 96 hour, 72 hour, and 48 hour loaves. The flavor was similar to what I had described earlier, but the one thing that was different is that on the 96 hour loaf, I toasted them all in the toaster oven at the same time. On the 96 hour loaf, the crust immediately darkened and turned really dark. So that's the first real verifiable evidence that there are, are more sugars coming out of the loaf to the crusts now. There may be more sugars in the loaf, uh, but clearly there's something different happening with respect to the sugar content. And that may also be what's driving a little bit more of this taste difference where the sourness has now mellowed out, even though the, the sour taste is still increasing. It just has a little rounder flavor to it than that biting, tangy, sour flavor we saw in the 36 and 48 hour loaves. Okay, we are on the home stretch, loaf number six. Five days in the refrigerator, 120 hour cold proof. Let me get that loaf out of the fridge. So similar to the other loaves, this loaf maintained a little bit of height in the fridge. Uh, after five days. It does not appear to be flattening. This loaf compared to the other two loaves though it looks like it it has expanded up against the sides of this pan yeah a little bit more than the others. The others had a little bit more domed structure. This one looks like it flattened out a little bit. Let me dust this up. Now five days is really on the extreme end of what people typically do. You know, when I did a survey of other uh, sourdough bakers on the social media groups that I'm involved in, very few people have gone five days. So we'll see what happens. And similar to the other loaves, you can see it's losing a lot of moisture into the towel. No surprise. That loaf is standing up proudly and there's some air in that loaf. I mean, that is really a really nice looking loaf. I mean, for five days, I'm surprised. Let's uh, score it. Yeah, it does not feel slack. Now, as I'm touching it, it does feel a little looser than the other lobes. I'm not getting as much resistance against that blade. Let's watch it for a second. Now, as this loaf has just sat here for a few seconds, I can see the slash opened up a little bit more and I can see a little bit more gluten structure inside of the slash than I did on the other loaves. I don't know if it's significant or meaningful, but this loaf felt a little more slack when I was cutting through it and it seems like it's opening up a little bit more, but not materially different from the prior loaf. I say, let's bake it up and see what happens. Okay, loaf number six is out of the oven. Let's take a look. This loaf baked up very quickly, 29 minutes, even though it's the largest loaf that we've done yet. Uh, similar to the last one, that's a great looking loaf. Huge oven spring. Nice ear on top there. Um, like I said, if I hadn't known this had been in the refrigerator for five days and saw this loaf sitting here, that's really, that's a beautiful loaf. Similar to the last one, the 96 hour loaf, it did really open up on the scoring, kind of tore the sides open a little bit. It's a little less shapely than some of my other loaves, but just the oven spring and the size and height of the loaf is really quite amazing. So we will let this cool for 90 minutes and then we will cut it open, inspect the crumb and do the final taste test. Okay, this loaf has been cooling for 90 minutes. Let's take another look at it. Um, as I look at it here, you can see the scoring really blew open. And then interestingly on this end, uh, you see the, the crust tore here in two places. That implies that the crust is a little more thin than the prior loaves and it may be losing a little bit of its structure. 
as I press on the loaf, normally you'd feel it pushing back a little bit. This is a little spongy, similar to the loaf we had yesterday. So let's cut open 120 hour loaf in the refrigerator for five days. It's a soft crust, soft crumb. That looks really good. I mean, that's another great looking loaf on the inside. Um, it's soft. I mean, as I squeeze it here, you can see that it's, you know, not the typical crusty, crunchy uh, crust, but that is just a gorgeous crumb. Uh, that looks like a wonderful loaf. So five days in the refrigerator. If I look at this loaf on the outside, this looks like a great loaf. I look on that at that loaf on the inside. There's no way I would have guessed that this had been in the refrigerator for five days based on what I'm looking at right here. So now we will do a taste test. Okay, we have done a taste test of loaf number six. Let me get the taste test results from the other tasting judge. So we both have a similar reaction to this loaf. This loaf is more sour than the prior loaf for sure. It has this beautiful, soft, tender crumb and very soft, tender crust that we saw in the 96 hour loaf and the 72 hour loaf. So these last three loaves have been very similar in terms of texture, and this is the most sour flavor. I would say that this one is really, I mean, it's personal preference, but this is really pushing the high end of the sourness uh, compared to all the loaves. I probably had a personal preference for the 96 hour loaf. The other tasting judge had a personal preference for this loaf. So we're getting up there in terms of sourness. Uh, but the interesting thing is absolutely no degradation in the gluten structure after five days in the refrigerator. That's really unexpected. So I'd like to thank the other tasting judge as a uh, compensation for participating in this experiment. She will be entitled to a lifetime supply of as much sourdough bread as she can eat. So we just completed the experiment on the six loaves. Let's do a quick recap of what we did. So I mixed up a batch of dough using the Tartine Basic Country Loaf recipe. I followed that recipe exactly by the book up through bulk fermentation, shaping, and final shaping. We shaped it into six loaves, and then we did six different cold proofs in the refrigerator, ranging from 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, 96 hours, 120 hours. So those were the six times that we looked at with the expectation that we could compare the changes in the loaves from the 24 hour loaf up to the 120 hour five day loaf. I've done a number of experiments like this, and I have to say that this experiment had the most surprises. Each time I do one of these experiments, you go into it with some type of hypothesis of what you think is going to happen. And as I stated at the beginning of this process, uh, what we expected was that the sourness would increase between the first loaf and the sixth loaf, and that you would also see some deterioration of the gluten or deterioration of the loaf structure between the one day loaf and the five day loaf. And we had a lot of surprises in between. So let me give a quick summary of what we found. On the first dimension that we looked at, which was the sourness, I would say that that somewhat followed the general path that we would have expected with a few minor variations. The first three loaves really stepped up in sourness with each loaf. The 24 hour loaf was sour. The 36 hour loaf was sour with a little tangy aftertaste. The 48 hour loaf was sour with almost a bitterness to it. Then when we crossed over to the latter three loaves, the 72 hour loaf started to mellow out that sour flavor 
It was slightly more sour than the 48 hour loaf, but the bitterness was gone. The 96 hour loaf was slightly more sour than the 72 hour loaf. Again, with that mellow round flavor and none of the bitterness. And then the 120 hour loaf uh, was slightly more sour than the 96 hour loaf. And it just started to get a hint of that acidic uh, tang to it again that we didn't see in the 72 hour or the 96 hour loaves. So the, the sourness, I would say, kind of traveled steeply up through the first three loaves. Then it flattened out a little bit through the latter three loaves and it really changed its complexion through all six loaves. They all had a very distinctly different sour flavor. And then with respect to the sourness of the loaf, I would say that if you're searching for that classic San Francisco sourdough flavor, there's more to it than just the cold retard. Even though the sourness increased over these six loaves, and it definitely got closer and closer to that real pungent, biting, sour flavor, that flavor of what I call the classic San Francisco sourdough involves something else. It's not just the time in the refrigerator. And many people will say that when you ask the question, what does it take to get that super sour San Francisco style flavor? People will just say, leave it in the refrigerator for a long period of time. This gets you part of the way there. This is one of the tools that you need to get there, but it's not 100%. There's something else going on with that flavor. That wasn't exactly what we were trying to find here, but I like to use that as a comparison because that's the reason a lot of people will do the long cold proof is to try to capture that classic West Coast sourdough flavor. This is a piece of it, but it's not the whole equation. The second dimension that we looked at was the texture and the crumb. Uh, and this is where I was totally surprised. When we started baking the loaves, they looked and felt exactly like, you know, the 12 hour cold retard loaves that I normally do. Uh, so the 24 hour loaf, the 36 hour loaf, the 48 hour loaf pretty much followed the process as you would expect. But once we got into the 72 hour and beyond the last three loaves, the texture really changed where the, the crumb became very soft and the crust became very soft. The crust also became very thin. And these were really distinctively different loaves compared to the normal loaves that I would bake just because of their softness. Uh, they had a very soft, supple crumb. Uh, and then the soft crust was really very unique uh, and not something I have typically seen in sourdough um, and just a really tender, tasty crumb and crust. So that really was not expected. The third dimension that I looked for was deterioration of the gluten. And this was really where there was the, the biggest surprise. If you took a survey and asked 10 experienced bakers what would happen if you cold proofed a loaf in the refrigerator for five days, nine out of 10 of them would have said that the loaf would start to break down, that the gluten structure would start to deteriorate, that on the fifth day you would have something come out that really wouldn't stand up as a loaf. That proved to be completely untrue. I mean, this is 120 hours in the refrigerator and this had incredible oven spring. I mean, a gorgeous crumb. So we really didn't see any of the expected gluten deterioration that was expected and that a lot of people kind of talk about as what happens when you do a long uh, refrigerator proof, especially when you go past something like three days or so. So when we got into four days and five days and we were still producing, you know, gorgeous crumb on these loaves, that was really notable and unexpected. So based on this experiment, I'm pretty confident that I could whip up a double batch of dough on Sunday, bake one loaf on Sunday, put the other loaf in the refrigerator and bake that loaf anytime, Monday through Friday. And that would come out to be a great loaf with increasing sourness, but no deterioration in the gluten structure. That was very surprising to find that.
So across the six loaves and those three dimensions, the taste, the texture, and the potential gluten deterioration or the structure, there's a lot of information here. So I created this summary that shows those three dimensions across the six loaves. So you can pause the video if you prefer at this point and read the details. So in this experiment, we were searching for that point, for that sweet spot where you optimize the flavor right before the structure deteriorates, and we did not find that. That still remains elusive. It's somewhere beyond 120 hours. Uh, so with these six loaves, we pushed this pretty far up to you know five days in the refrigerator but that sweet spot may still be somewhere past 120 hours, which is surprising. It's interesting, but that's part of the art and the alchemy of sourdough baking is right when you think you have it figured out, it surprises you and does something completely different. So I guess I need to bake six more loaves to find <laughs> that elusive answer that we were looking for. But first, I'm going to eat some bread. Thank you for watching my video.